In this video, I'm gonna show you a technique that you can use in our tool builder to generate yourself a synthetic data set for testing your agent. So if you've seen our other video on better knowledge retrieval, you know we made this tool that does a knowledge retrieval from a frequently asked questions table. So it helps an agent with customer support pull from a knowledge table of FAQs when dealing with a potential customer that has a question. Now, when building out this tool, I had a problem. If you scroll down to the knowledge search, you'll see that I don't actually have a knowledge table that has frequently asked questions in it. So it becomes really hard to test whether this tool works. So what I wanna show you is a really cool technique that you can use in Relevance AI to generate a synthetic data set, a whole table full of what are essentially fake frequently asked questions for a theoretical application. So a really useful hack if you're engineering these systems, you wanna debug things, but you don't actually have live production data to work with. So let's have a look. We'll jump over to our generate FAQ knowledge table tool where this magic happens. You can see that we have two inputs. We have the company. So this is like the fake company that we wanna generate FAQs for and the company description. If we scroll down further, you'll see that we have an LLM step. Here, we provide the LLM with context on the company. So the name of the company and the description as provided in the user inputs. And then we tell it its role. You're a customer service rep at the company. Think of 50 question answer pairs based on the most common questions for company's product and return this as a JSON array format. And then I've used again, a prompt engineering technique I like, which is to finish off my prompt with the header for the thing that I want the LLM to generate, particularly when I've set the precedent with this header content, header content pattern. So essentially we're asking the LLM here to generate a whole data set of synthetic frequently asked questions about a company. So let's test this out. Let's go up here and add a company and a company description. So I'm gonna go Sparky CRM. So let's make this a CRM design for electricians. Its core value proposition is that it focuses on enabling them to use it on site. So it has fantastic mobile support. So this is the company I've made up that I want to generate a FAQ table for so that I can test my other tooling in my multi-agent system. And let's just run this LLM step and see what it generates. Cool. So it's returned the JSON, but immediately I see a problem. Let's scroll down. In fact, I see two problems. First of all, it hasn't just returned me JSON. In fact, it's done a pretty poor job. It's giving me a text description of what it has returned, which is nice. Thank you, I guess. It's given me a concatenated JSON object that does include some Q&A questions, but you know, I would love to have the rest, please. And it's even insultingly told me that there are more to be found where it's returned dot, dot, dot. So obviously, this is not useful. I can't insert this into a knowledge set. And here lies one of the bigger challenges that you might face when working with LLMs, particularly when trying to do something like this, generating synthetic JSON data. LLMs don't return JSON, they return strings. And sometimes those strings start with sentences or do strange things. Sometimes they call things Q and A instead of question answer. I would rather my knowledge table had the columns question answer than Q and A. Fortunately at Relevance, we've built a really, really useful underrated feature to help with a situation like this. It's called validators. Let's dive into it. So if we scroll up, you'll find this settings cog next to any tool step. This opens the more advanced settings for the tool step. So we'll click on that and you'll see that there's this validators little sparkly option here that we have toggled off. Validators help us force an output type or at least check that the LLM is trying to match a certain output type and encourage it to fix its output if it doesn't. So let's toggle that on and let's add a new validator. In this case, we'll add a JSON schema validator. So what's JSON schema? So this is sort of an agreed upon format in the developer community for defining how JSON should look like. 
So this is what we can communicate to the LLM for how it should format its response. So let's select that. Now you can Google search how to create a JSON schema. I'm not gonna go through all the technicalities, but I'll walk through what we want here. So first of all, we want something of type array to be returned. Fantastic. Now we wanna describe what the items in that array should look like. So the objects in our array. So let's do items and create a new object. We want the type of our items to be an object as I've just said, because it could be for an example, an array of strings or an array of numbers, but no, we want an array of question and answer objects. So now we can define the schema for these objects using properties. We want two properties. I don't want Q and A, I want question, and I want this to be of type string. So we want a string question. And of course, I want answer, also of type string. Cool. So this is the schema I want the LLM to generate. An array of objects with two properties, question and answer, that are strings. Now, please bear in mind that validators doesn't guarantee that the LLM succeeds at this. What it does is it takes the output from the LLM, it checks it against this JSON schema. If it passes, then happy days, it will return. If it fails, we'll take the error from our JSON schema validation and we'll pass that back to the LLM and be like, hey, fix it. We'll try this a couple of times if we need to. If it doesn't succeed after two or three times, it will error out. So rather than just hallucinate or return invalid content, the LLM step will error. So you can guarantee this will either generate things as you need it, or it will not. You don't have to worry about handling edge cases where the LLM adds a random description, for example, or changes the names of your columns. So we've given it this validator now. If we run this step, hopefully we can see some better results. Hell yeah. As you can see, it's generated some valid JSON. We know that because our UI is using this JSON UI. That's how you know it's valid JSON. Otherwise it will look like a string, like or like Markdown, like the previous result looked like. And not only has it generated us, oh, look at that. A beautiful amount of synthetic Q and A's, but as we see, it's question and answer, not Q, A. There's no description. We're off to the races, baby. So yeah, validators really powerful for when you're generating stuff that you need to be in a specific format. All right, two more steps to get this into a knowledge table. Firstly, what you need to understand about LLMs is that they will always return text. They are large language models. They will always return text. The text might look like a JSON, like this. This looks like JSON. It's text that looks like a JSON. So before we insert it into a knowledge table, we need to make it real life JSON. And we can do that easily with code. You can go down here, create a JavaScript code step. And all you have to do is run the answer to the LLM step through a JSON.pass. So this is JavaScript that takes a string that looks like JSON and turns it into real JSON. Again, you can use Python for this as well. I'm a JavaScript boy. And then finally, we can go to our insert data to knowledge tool step. Again, the way you find that is clicking this plus, searching insert data to knowledge. You can also find it up here in the sidebar. And in this step, we're gonna pass in the results of this code step into the new data to insert field. So this again, re receives an array of objects as its requirement. Now we need to create a knowledge set. So we'll click new. We'll call this Sparky CRM FAQ. We'll create a table. So that's now the knowledge set that we're gonna insert this data into. Now, of course, we have to run this JavaScript step code first to turn the LM into real JSON. Let's do that quickly. Cool, there's our JSON. And now we can run this step and that will insert it into our Sparky CRM FAQ. Fantastic, it's been inserted. So let's click this view button and check out the knowledge table. There you go. We've got three pages full of questions and answers that have been made up by the LLM about my fake application, Sparky CRM. Can I generate invoices? Can I schedule jobs? Can I track payments? Does Sparky CRM support multiple languages according to the LLM? No, it's only available in English. Now, when I wanna go test my retrieval tool, 
I can go into my tool, I can edit it and go to my knowledge search and select my new Sparky CRM FAQ question. Um, and I can actually test this tool now. I've been unblocked with synthetic data, thanks to Relevance AI. It all comes together nicely, doesn't it? Definitely go check out the video on better knowledge retrieval as well. Anyway, thank you.